thousands and a lot of new debt. Chris, uh, uh, the battle over who's going to buy the CRAFAR farms continues. You've probably seen the full-page ad that they've been running, uh, the Chinese company, uh, NZ Natural uh, Dairies. All the reasons why we should be selling the farmland, if you like, to the Chinese. Uh, what does that say to you? Well, as an economist, it, uh, it captures all sorts of issues. At an at a individual level, what they're saying is true. The, the Crafer farms only represent a small chunk of, of New Zealand's uh, dairy, dairy land, and um, what's, the, what's the big deal? And, and foreign, uh, foreign investment can be a good thing because it can help business in, in New Zealand. But at a macro level, it just really captures the fact that New Zealanders don't have a great savings rate. There's, <clears throat> there's not a massive pool of, of savings here or, or a massive pool of wealth that can swing in and, and buy something like uh, the, the, the Crafer Farms. And it's not just dairy land, it's, it's, our, it's our share market that we see the same thing, huge foreign ownership, it's our government bonds are owned uh, largely by offshore investors and indeed our, uh, our private debt is uh, significantly funded from, from offshore. So it really captures uh, the, the issue of New Zealand's poor savings rate whenever these issues come up about foreign ownership. Unless we save and have the money to buy assets ourselves, uh, then, it's, then it's only foreigners that are going to sell them or prices have to fall dramatically so that locals can afford to, uh, to, to buy things. Do you ever think what would have happened if uh, uh, Robert Muldoon, Piggy Muldoon, in the old days back in 1975 hadn't thrown out compulsory savings? What would the economic picture look like today, Chris? Well, you can only you can only guess, and uh, I've worked in the funds management industry for a, for a very long time, and and both here and in Australia, and the differences are just dramatic. Not only in the in the pool of savings, uh, like Don mentions, or the depth of capital markets, but also in individuals' attitudes to to saving. Here we we talk about well, should I buy another rental property, or what's my mortgage going to do? Uh, over in Australia, they're, they're much more aware of uh, what's going on in markets. They're, they're a little bit more savvy than us. And that all goes hand in hand with the fact that they've been exposed to financial markets because of their compulsory superannuation for, for a long time. So I think there's all sorts of good things uh, that are starting to happen because of, of KiwiSaver. Um, but we still need to crank it up and, and save, save harder. Compulsory savings might be one of those ways and we can only guess what would have happened if we'd been doing that since the, uh, the 70s. But you'd hope that the situation would be a lot better than what it is now, which is fairly woeful. But we're kind of between a rock and a hard place now, aren't we? Yes, uh, I think most people would think, yes, we should be saving more. But what does that do for investment in our businesses if we're farmers or paying back our debt if we're farmers, Don? Well, I just think one of the things that I think the banks are saying now is they've got to have 75% of their money funded onshore, so that's going to force us over the next couple of years to actually save our money. That's, you know, and that's a really difficult thing for people to realise. I also think New Zealand's have been great spenders, and as Chris says, you know, we need to understand this stuff. And the other thing is that people who've got money in the bank and a strong position are happy. Those who've got no money are unhappy right now. All this doom and gloom. There was one bit of uh, bright news in the recent days. Uh, PGG Wrightson is uh, back in the money. They made, what, $23.3 million. Uh, what does it say about the economy, Chris? Well, I think it's easy to get really gloomy right now, but uh, the fact is that a year ago we were talking about going into a Great Depression and uh, like the 30s, and that hasn't happened. What's happening is that we're just grinding our way slowly out of uh, out of the, the the slump, and it feels patchy. But that's the way that recoveries go when when we've had such a big shock. Now, financial shocks like we've had take years to recover from, and and I think we'll be saying is this it for for quite a while. But we've also got to focus on the fact that it's not as bad as what people were uh, expecting a year ago. Uh, it's not as good as, say, when we pulled out of the Asian crisis, but this has been a much greater shock. And people, I think, need to focus on the positives a little bit. And, and you know, when companies deliver decent earnings, uh, like you've mentioned, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a bit of a bright light. But there's plenty of them out there. It's just not, we're just not going back to the boom times any time soon. And we need to get used to that. But let's get positive. Meantime, there is no resolution to the Alan Hubbard saga going on, although rumour has it that the Cabinet has been briefed that perhaps serious fraud office will find nothing wrong. What does that tell us? Well, I think looking at the finance company issues uh, in, a, in a broader perspective, 
they're suffering from the same indigestion that uh, that we've been talking about. You know, they've, when you look within a finance company, you can look at the the client's perspective or the investor's perspective, um, and and that's certainly very very tough for those investors. But if you look at it on the on the assets that the finance companies have invested in, there's a lot of indigestion there for the same things we we're talking about before. Farm prices that have got very very high. Um, and, and now you can't liquidate those farms very, very easily. And if you if you do, you're going to take a loss. So that's an issue that's going on in, um, in in many finance companies, be it rural or in property development. For the economy, one of the issues is the uh, the, the collapse of the sector means that there's no mezzanine finance taking place. So that's another thing which is contributing to a a slower level of growth and it feeds into uh, one of the factors that Don was talking about. Um, unless the deal really stacks up well, uh, it's very difficult to get finance on it right now. Banks are, banks are cautious. We can see agricultural lending growth is, has decelerated massively over the last couple of years and if banks aren't lending to you, there's really no one following them up. So if it doesn't stack up as a bank deal, you're, uh, you're, you're plumb out of luck. All of these things contribute to a lower level of uh, activity and they're going to be around for, uh, for a while. Hold that thought. We'll come back after the break. Up next, we ask our guests what happens here at home when Aussies go to the polls on Saturday. But first, answer this. In the newspaper ads run by Natural Dairy, how many millions of dollars does the Chinese company say it will boost New Zealand's annual dairy exports by by 2012 if it's allowed to buy those Crayfar farms? The answer right after the break. So stay with us. Welcome back to Money Talks. Just before the break, we asked you, in the newspaper ads run by Natural Dairy, how many millions of dollars does a Chinese company say it will boost New Zealand's annual dairy exports by, by 2012, if it's allowed to buy the Crafer Farms? The answer, $120 million. Okay, Don, let's go across the ditch now. We know that the Australians are going to the polls on Saturday. How are you picking it? Uh, looks like Julia's going to win, doesn't it? She's got the got the margin there. But not yeah. not very much. It's not coming down. Margin, They're saying no. today it could be perhaps only you know a, a four seat majority. That's got to hamper what she's able to accomplish. Mm, she's got big plans too, hasn't she? Does it really matter to us here in New Zealand, particularly the rural sector, who's running the show across the ditch? Not really, Genevieve. I don't think it really does matter to us. The farmers over there are only a small part of the economy. It's a mainly an export, you know, like a mineral exporting company, isn't it? country, isn't it? Uh, Chris, I see that the Australian economy, as you know, is really driven by one large export, minerals. Are they in danger of running out at some point and being absolutely bankrupt? Not in the, uh, not in the near term. Um, you know, I think of Aussie as a, uh, a big quarry and, and New Zealand as a big farm is a pretty simplistic way of, of looking at it. But the, uh, the commodity story is, is really good for Australia. And so uh, the elections is obviously very important, but I think what's even more important for Australia right now is just monitoring that demand out of China. That's important for Aussie and, uh, and New Zealand. We're both really dependent on, on exports up there. And Australia's uh, good performance is really important for us because that's uh, not only our uh, our biggest export generation uh, destination, but that's where all our tourists are coming from at the moment. So uh, we just want Aussie to keep rolling along in the uh, in the good way that it's uh, been going. I read an interesting piece uh, earlier this week about how tough it is, even for the Australians who've had long relationships in China, how tough it is to actually take a stake in China, if you like, that they're quite willing to take the expertise and the money but when it comes to opening the doors wider and letting you, for example, buy land or really get a foothold, it just ain't happening. Is there a warning sign for us here? Well, I think the warning signs here uh, should have been ringing uh, loud and clear with, uh, with Fonterra's experience up there. It's just a very, very difficult uh, area to do business. And uh, I think New Zealand's doing the, the right thing by trying to trade with China and trying to develop uh, closer relationships with China. Uh, but I think uh, we also need to know that it's, uh, it's, it's not New Zealand. They've got their own way of doing business and, and you need to be very careful and have a very long-term approach to doing business up. 
And I'm surprised that this isn't an issue that the people of New Zealand and the governments of New Zealand haven't had to wrestle with before. I agree. And look, we probably need a national plan for agriculture. There's no plan. There's no long term. We're seeing a little bit above with this new initiative from the government. But where's the plan for agriculture? You know, we're, we just go by year by year, government by government. We need a plan. Who should be responsible for making that plan? Who are the players? Look, we probably need Federated Farmers, Fonterra, Red Meat Industry, some people out, out in the finance industry, you know, and they should have a think tank, get them all together under the one room and, have a th and, and try and get something going on because it's a major concern to me and to other people. We're just drifting. We're not, we don't have a plan, you know. And of course, this is an economic show, gentlemen, and we talk about money, but is it really all about money? Uh, you know, we seem to live by the culture that bigger is better, and the more income makes us happier. Don, I know you have strong views on this. Uh, you see people under incredible stress in the rural sector. Mm. What's your message to them? Look, there's people out there that have taken on more debt and, uh, and then that, that's got grumpy and the banks just basically put a big circle right around all their businesses, their beach house, the farms, the cows, and basically they're saying, we own all this, your equity's at the end there and we need to get organised. But I'm also finding that, you know, there's been some studies done by psychologists around this and they're saying that more debt, more income doesn't actually make you more satisfied or more happy. Good relationships do make you, you know, good friends do make you happier. So some, we need to think about some of this stuff and try and get a more happy relationship with people that, we, that we're familiar with and stop trying to be, grow things and borrow money and create these massive businesses. That makes any happier. Don't worry, be happy. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thanks to my guests, ASB economist Chris Tennant Brown and farm consultant and rural business advisor Don Fraser. Now, we'd love to hear your feedback, so drop me a line on the website and remember to check out my weekly blog. We'll give the last word to shoes. That's right, shoes. Forget all those high priced economists, sorry, Chris, with their complicated analysis. According to fashion historians, you can tell the state of any economy anywhere in the world by looking at a lady's footwear. And the higher the heel, the tougher the times. The Great Depression saw high heels on flapper shoes. The 1970s oil crisis launched the platform. As one wise woman once wrote, all the world's a stage and the stars get the best shoes. For those women down on the farm, stilettos, anyone, keep the faith. See you next week.